Thank you, Karen. Our next case is a case presentation of a congenital cataract, which case doesn't sound weird by the title, but if you know Brian Forbes, you will probably find a way to make it. So, so I know it's a boring title. Um, I think you'll find that the case isn't so boring, but I think you'll also see that the appropriate title for this talk was already taken, so I had to have a boring title. You'll see. Again, my name is Brian Forbes, and I don't know how to use this. Here we go. All right, so um, kid comes in with a cataract. So this is 22 years ago or something like that, 20 years ago, somewhere along the lines. Bruce Saren, um, who most many of you know, saw him in the NICU at Westchester Hospital. Um, saw him on rounds at, you know, uh, one day old um, and was found to have an abnormal red reflex. Um, he thought he knew it was a cataract. Uh, he didn't do cataracts, so he had him evaluated. He sent him to Will's Eye Hospital to see Joe Calhoun. Um, Joe Calhoun at that time had just stopped doing cataract surgery, but he saw the kid, um, was concerned that it was PHPV. Um, he could find a red reflex around the, the uh, opacity, so he decided to start medical therapy. But realistically, in speaking to him, he said that he thought it was a surgical cataract and he sent it to CHOP to be seen uh, by a surgical person there. Unfortunately, when the baby got to CHOP, it saw Janie Edmond, who doesn't really know what she's doing, but just kidding. Um, so saw, <laughs> saw Janie, but Janie didn't do cataracts either, and I was the one at CHOP who was doing the cataracts. Janie suggested to continue medical therapy too, uh, but again, she thought it was surgical as well. Um, and so it again, she started, she continued with the dilation of the eyes three times a day to open up the red reflex, the patching of the other eye, and then to see me. And about two weeks of life, um, it eventually did come to see me. And I saw the kid, um, and this is what I saw. So I just happened to take this picture because I had gotten my new fancy digital camera, which 20 years ago cost a whole lot of money and had those mini discs in it. I went to you know, learn how to use it. So I took a picture of the eye, so, but I think most of the people in the audience would agree this is a pretty significant cataract. It's uh, dilated right there, so there is a little bit of a red reflex around it, but, you know, if the pupil comes down at all, no no light's really going to get around there. There's cortical spokes, if you look more closely. Um, in my opinion, it was a surgical cataract. Um, they weren't really that into doing surgery at the moment, but I discussed surgery. The kid's two weeks old. At that point, we were doing cataracts somewhere around six weeks in these kids, which we still kind of are. And so I suggested, well, let's continue doing it, continue patching, and we'll see it four weeks and then kind of go from there. So, so oh, at that visit, I did do an ultrasound. Um, it didn't appear to be PHPV because there was no stock and posterior opacity. And again, um, corneal diameter is weak. Okay, so I think Dr. Orlin's sitting there saying this is cataract line, just take it out, right? Yeah. So anyway, um, management, uh, like I said, um, I think it needs surgery, but we have a little bit of time. Why don't you keep doing what you're doing? I'll see you back um, at four weeks. But I, I booked the kid for surgery. Um, I called along the way because it was early on in my career and I just wanted to see how they were doing. They said they were doing okay with the patching. At five weeks of age, um, I saw the kid, same deal. It's like, this really needs to come out. I booked the kid for seven weeks uh, to do the surgery. Um, and I changed it to hematropine because the parents were having trouble putting the drops in all the time, which again was another reason probably to do the surgery earlier rather than later. Uh, the hematropine, you put it at night, then during the day, the kid's dilated but not cycloplegic. It's a trick we sometimes use. So um, what happens next? No shows for the OR. Um, I call the patient and say, come on, you really need to come in. This is a significant thing. If you don't get the surgery done sooner rather than later, the visual potential is really, really bad. Um, no shows at nine weeks. At that point, I don't know, I was early in my career. I kind of felt like I should get maybe social services involved because, you know, the visual potential is going down by the day. Um, so I finally see the kid at 12 weeks and David Phillips, whom some of you know, he's a technician. He did a television acuity on the, on the child before I got in the room. And, you know, a 12 week old doing a television acuity is not a perfect thing, but he got equal 
um, television usually of 2540 both eyes and I kind of look and say, okay, um, you know, tellers are tellers, how accurate that can that be? So I walk into the room and that's what I see. <laughs> there is no cataract. And if you all thinking I have the wrong eye, <laughs> that's the kid and that's his eye. <laughs> Um, I have no idea what happened um, at all. Um, I did see him when he was a little bit older, almost two years of age. Again, he's a plus one OU and that's his nerves. I don't see anything on it. There's nothing abnormal at all. So anyway, he it just went away. So um, that's that. Um, what happened? I really don't know. Uh, like I said, um, uh, you know, the parents honestly went with the pray thing. They they said prayer did it, so good for them. Um, and anyway, after a little bit of the detective work, I called and found out he's a student at Westchester. And I said, can you come in or can you text me a picture of your eyes? Because I thought it'd be good to have for this, for this. And he said, my eyes are fine. I'm not coming. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's all. And I, have, I have no idea what happened. Dr. Orland? Yeah, I, I, you know, we don't work up unilateral cataracts, so uh, we wouldn't have done blood work on them for that, but I might have guessed it'd be bilateral if it was, but I don't, I really don't know at this point. And, you know, He's otherwise been healthy for 20 years. At least that's what he tells me. So I don't know. I really don't know. So, so Brian, uh, have you ever seen anything like that before? I, I subsequently did see one kid who had less dense a cataract, and it was one that we were going to manage medically, and it did all but clear. So I've seen one get better as well. Um, uh, I actually have pictures of it as well, but... Um, yeah, it, it definitely changed and got better. It doesn't make me any, treat them any differently. I still jump in at six weeks, but, um, they have to pay for my kid's college. <laughs> no, I don't know what happened in that case. And I, yeah, you bet, <laughs> you bet. It's because Paul was a resident on service. <laughs> Is there anything peculiar about pediatric metabolism, such as lipid metabolism or something else that may adjust itself as time goes by as a child grows. So it's like, it's like I said to him, um, you know, unilateral cataracts, we really don't work up medically very often. So we didn't really do much of a medical workup on the kid. And so, I, I mean, his, by history, and he did follow up a couple, a couple times after that he's been all but perfectly healthy. And you're right, maybe something cleared up. But I don't know the answer to that. So, like I said, his blood chemi his basic blood chemistries preoperatively were were normal because he did have blood work that day. Thank you. Yep.